Very good morning, dear students. Welcome to Learning Radius Current Affairs. In today's discussion, we'll be entering to international issues. International issues, international relations, international organizations, related current affairs of 2020 and 21. In the last series, we discussed national issues. In the same manner, we'll be discussing international issues. We'll be discussing 10 topics in every video. And in this entire series, we'll be discussing international issues of 2020-21, which is highly required for the coming UPSC preliminary examination. So let's start with today's discussion. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss global energy meet calls for accelerator shift to renewables, UN guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities, Tista River dispute, Sri Lankan government abolished 19th amendment to constitution, Korea Museum, India Maldives relations, India ICG discussion, Qatar labor laws, UNSC 12067 committee, and International Energy Security Conference 2020. These are the, two, these are the 10 topics what we are going to discuss in today's video. So once again, it is on International Energy Security Conference 2020, United Nations Security Council 1267 Committee, Qatar Labor Laws Reforms, India ICJ Discussion, India Maldives Relation, Korea Museum, Sri Lankan Government Abolished 19th Amendment to Constitution, Tista River Dispute, UN guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities and global energy meet calls for accelerator shift to renewables. So while discussing this, you should keep one thing in your mind, listening to current affairs video at the same time solving out the question papers, learning radius premium preliminary question paper is highly required to have an extra edge in your overall preparation. Let's come to the first topic. Global energy make calls for accelerated shift to renewables. Now, what the discussion is about, the World Energy Transition Outlook Report, brought out by the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, says the COVID-19 crisis offers an unexpected opportunity for countries across the world to decouple their economies from fossil fuel and accelerate the shift to renewable energy resources. So that's the discussion. Global energy meet calls for accelerated shift to renewables. So the World Energy Transition Outlook report brought out by the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA is in discussion, have a clear edge and clear understanding about IRENA says the COVID-19 crisis offers an unexpected opportunity for countries across the world to decouple their economics from fossil fuel and accelerate the shift to renewable energy sources. Previewed at the Virtual Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue, that is what called BETD 2021. So UPSC can ask a question like, uh, BETD is in news, what is BETD is about? So it is Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue. So previewed at the Virtual Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue, BETD 2021, the report proposes energy transition solution for the narrow pathway available to contain the rise of temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius and halt global warming. The document highlights the need for countries around the world to accelerate the effort towards energy transition without delay. IRENA observes the emergence of a new energy system based on renewable energy, te renewable technologies and complemented by green hydrogen and modern bioenergy. So that is regarding the discussion of IRENA at the same time, the discussion of global energy meet, which calls for accelerator shift to renewables. Now, this was a discussion in Hindu newspaper. Global energy made calls for accelerator shift to renewable, the same heading you can see in Hindu newspaper. And uh, under that, you can see window of opportunity to meet goals of Paris climate deal. Closing fast once IRENA chief. The COVID-19 crisis offers an unexpected opportunity for countries across the world. The same discussion you can see. So you can understand what is IRENA at the same time, uh, what is BETD, that is Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue, and 
the fundamentals of BTD and IRENA and the discussions related to IRENA in the recent. Now, next discussion is about UN guidelines. United Nations has outlined a set of 10 principles for implementation of its first ever guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities. So United Nations has outlined a set of 10 principles for implementation of its first ever guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities. Now the guidelines outline a set of 10 principles and detail the steps for implementation. So we should have an idea about the 10 principles. The principle one, all persons with disabilities have legal capacity and therefore no one shall be denied access to justice on the basis of disability. Second one, principle two, that is uh, facilities and services must be universally accessible to ensure equal access to justice without discrimination of persons with disabilities. Third one, person with disabilities, including children with disabilities, have the right to appropriate procedural accommodation. Principle four, person with disabilities have the right to access legal notices and information in a timely and accessible manner on an equal basis with others. Principle five, person with disabilities are entitled to all substantive and procedure safeguard recognized in international law on an equal basis with others and state must provide the necessary accommodation to guarantee due process. Principle six is person with disability have the right to free or affordable legal assistance. Principle seven is person with disability have the right to participate in the administration of justice on equal basis with others. Principle eight is person with disabilities have the right to report compliance and initiate legal proceedings concerning human rights violation and crimes have their complaints investigated and be afforded effective remedies. Principle nine is effective and robust monitoring mechanism play a critical role in supporting access to justice for persons with disabilities. And principle 10, all those working in the justice system must be provided with awareness, raising and training programs addressing the right of person with disabilities, in particular in the context of access to justice. So these are the Ten principle, the guidelines outline a set of ten principle and detail the step for implementation. And I have read the ten principle. You should have clarity in all these ten principle. UPSC can frame statement related questions. Now you can define a person with disability. The UN Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability, which was adopted in 2007 as the first major instrument of human rights in the 21st century, defined person with disabilities as those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. So that's the definition. So once again, who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. That's a definition for disability by UN. Now, in newspaper in Indian Express in August 2020, you can see the UN guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities. So that was a news in newspaper that is a UN guideline on access to social justice for people with disabilities. The United Nations has outlined a set of 10 principles for implementation of its first ever guidelines that's the significant for its first ever guidelines on access to social justice for people with disabilities now the next discussion is on tista river dispute now bangladesh is discussing an almost dollar 1 billion loan from china for a comprehensive management and restoration project on the tista river so that is the discussion related to tista in current affair perspective Bangladesh is discussing an almost dollar one billion loan from China for a comprehensive management and restoration project on the Tista River. The project is aimed at managing the river basin, efficiently controlling the floods and tackling the water crisis in summers. India and Bangladesh have been engaged in long-standing dispute over water sharing in the Tista. So Tista River is in discussion. It is related with India, China and Bangladesh. And India and Bangladesh have been engaged in long-standing dispute over water sharing in Tista. And Bangladesh is discussing an almost $1 billion loan from China 
for a comprehensive management and restoration project on the Tista River. Now, Bangladesh and China. China is the biggest trading partner of Bangladesh and is the foremost source of imports. Recently, China declared zero duty on 97 percentage of import from Bangladesh. The concession flowed from China's duty-free, quota-free program for the least developed countries. China is the biggest arms supplier to Bangladesh. So that's the relationship between Bangladesh and China. In Hindu newspaper in August 2020, right from international perspective, what does Chinese interest in the tea star mean for India? That was the discussion. So you can see this particular discussion from Maine's perspective also. At the same time, tea star, the border, the political discussion, everything that is a political boundary, everything is very, very relevant from preliminary point of view also. Why have the negotiation between New Delhi and Dhaka on the Himalayan river not progressed over the years? That was the discussion. So once again, why have negotiation between New Delhi and Dhaka on the Himalayan river not progressed over the year? That was the discussion. On Hindu March 2021, that is just few months back, that is two months back, you can see this figure or this uh, photograph and the news right from Hindu newspaper, million depend on Tista waters, Hasina tells Modi. This was the major heading, the Hindu March 2021. Dhaka underlines need to conclude water sharing agreement at bilateral talks during PM's visit. So what I'm trying to convey, Tista River is in discussion and there in the discussion for the last two, three years and that were there in the last year and this year too, in 2020, you can see Tista discussion. In 2021 also, you can see Tista discussion. So have an understanding about River Tista at the same time, the relationship between India and Bangladesh and the issue between India and China and India and Bangladesh in connection with Tista, especially India and Bangladesh in connection with Tista. So that's why the Hindu newspaper, we can see what does Chinese interest in the Tista mean for India and million depend on Tista waters, Asina tells Modi, Dhaka underlines need to conclude water sharing agreement at bilateral talk during PM's visit. So that was the discussion related to Tista in 2020 and 2021. Next is Sri Lankan government abolished 19th amendment to constitution. Sri Lankan government has granted approval to abolish the 19th amendment to the constitution and replace it with 20th amendment. So once again, Sri Lankan government has granted approval to abolish the 19th amendment to the constitution and replace it with the 20th amendment. The amendment brought by previous government has put a two term limit of limit on presidency and curtailed the executive power of president and transferred it to parliament and independent commission. So what is the 19th amendment is about? That's the most important thing. So what is the amendment is about? The amendment brought by previous government had put a two term limit on presidency and curtailed the executive power of president and transferred it to parliament and independent commission. The Rajpaksa camp viewed the 19th amendment close as primarily intending to prevent its leaders return to power. The 19th Constitutional Amendment introduced in 2015, the legislation envisages the dilution of many powers of executive presidency which had been in force since 1978. It involves reduction in the terms of president and parliament from six years to five years. That's the first one. Second one, reintroduction, reintroduction of a two-term limit that a person can have, can have as president. So that is the second one. Third one, the power of president to dissolve parliament only after four and a half years. Fourth one, the revival of Constitutional Council and the establishment of independent commission. Fifth one, the president remains the head of cabinet and he can appoint ministers on the advice of prime minister. So this is the 19th constitutional amendment is about the reduction in terms of president and parliament from six years to five years. Reintroduction of a two term limit that a person can have as president. The power of president to dissolve parliament only after four and a half years. The revival of constitutional council and the establishment of independent commission and the president remains the head of cabinet and he can appoint ministers on the advice of prime minister now this was a news related to the same in indian express sri lankan president gotabaya rajwakse vows to abolish 19th amendment the 19a was the main election plank of the previous government the 19a depoliticized the government administration by ensuring independence of key pillars such as Judiciary, public service, and elections. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Thursday voted to abolish the 19th Amendment that curtailed the powers of the President and strengthened the role of Parliament 
Our first task will be to remove the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. He said while making the ceremonial address, outlining his policies at the inaugural session of the new parliament. So once again, our first task is to remove the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. He said while making the ceremonial address, outlining his policies at the inaugural session of the new parliament. And you can see a picture with a heading during the August Y election. The Sri Lankan People's Party saw two thirds parliamentary mandate or 150 seats in the 225 member assembly to effect constitutional changes. The foremost of them was the move to abolish the 19A. So that was the discussion related to the constitutional amendment of 19. Now, the next one is Kariye Museum related to Turkey. Now, Turkey's government has decided to convert another Byzantine monument in Istanbul, which has been a museum for over 70 years, into a working mosque. This is another ancient Orthodox church after Hagia Sophia that has become a mosque. So once again, Hagia Sophia, you should have clarity at the same time, Kariye Museum. So Turkey's government has decided to convert another Byzantine monument in Istanbul, which has been a museum for over 70 years, into a working mosque. That is another ancient Orthodox church after Hagia Sophia that has become a mosque. Now, this decision to transform the Kariya Museum into mosque has come a month after the conversion of the UNESCO World Heritage recognized Hagia Sophia. Turkey's top administrative court had approved the museum conversion into mosque in November 2019. Late last year, the Council of State, the highest administrative court in Turkey, had removed legal hurdles for the Chora, that is Kariya Museum, both the same. So, and uh, Kariya Museum reconversion into a mosque. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, whose Islamist AK party has long called for the reconversion of the Ottoman era mosques that were secularized by Kemalist, signed a decree tra transferring the management of the medieval monument to the Directorate of Islamic Affairs. Now, what is this uh, Chora Museum is about? That is Kariya Museum. Chora Museum was built as a church of the Holy Savior in Chora in the 4th century. It was a medieval Byzantine Greek Orthodox Church. The church was decorated with 14th century, first, sorry, first cause of the last judgment that remained treasured in the Christian world. In the 16th century, during the Ottoman era, the church was converted into a Korean mosque. After the Second World War, as Turkey pushed ahead with the creation of a more secular new republic out of the ashes of the Ottoman Empire, the Korean Museum became Korean. Sorry, the Kariye Mosque become Kariye Museum. Chora is also known as Kariye in Turkish and the medieval church of the Holy Savior in Chora. So here you can see the entire history behind the uh, Holy, sorry, the entire history behind this particular church and the discussion related to the uh, history too. Now, in the 16th century, during the Ottoman era, the church was converted into a Kariye Museum. After the Second World War, as Turkey pushed ahead with the creation of a more secular new republic out of the ashes of the Ottoman Empire, the Kariye Mosque became Kariye Museum. Chora is also known as Kariye in Turkish and the medieval church of the Holy Savior in Chora. So that's the basic history. Now, in the newspaper, a short history of Istanbul's Chora Museum. That was the heading in Hindu newspaper. A short history of Istanbul's Chora Museum, the Hindu, originally a Byzantine church that had been converted into a mosque by the Ottomans. The Chora Museum is being reopened for Muslim prayers by Turkey's President Erdogan. This was the discussion and this was the major heading. Now, the next topic of discussion is related to India and Maldives. India unveiled a dollar 500 million package to help the Maldives build a connectivity project linking its capital Mali with three islands and provided $250 million as budgetary support to help the Indian Ocean archipelago cope with the COVID-19 crisis. So India and Maldives are having very good relation and India is giving full support to Maldives to cope with the COVID-19. So India unveiled a $500 million package to help the Maldives build a connectivity project linking its capital Mali with the three islands and provided $250 million as budgetary support to help the Indian Ocean archipelago COVID-19 crisis. The measure was announced during a virtual meeting between External Affairs Minister S. Jashankar and his Maldives counterpart Abdullah Shahid. A new cargo ferry service will be launched between two countries. 
and people familiar with development said this will help india replace other countries to become the maldives top trade partner so that's the discussion now in newspaper you can see india announces dollar 500 million package for maldives the hindu newspaper is telling india pledged dollar 500 million to build bridges and causeways in the in the maldives as the country sought to counter growing chinese influence in the indian ocean and this is the figure you can see in hindu newspaper in the announces dollar 500 million package for maldives and uh, india maldives relationship is very very significant so for biggest intra island connectivity project ferry flights to begin shortly that was a heading you can see just below this image india announces slew of new connectivity measures for the maldives including air sea intra island and telecommunication in an effort to help the indian ocean island deal with the economic impact of the covid-19 pandemic so that was a discussion about now next one is related to icj the icj expressed its concern regarding the 31st august 2020 and 14 august 2020 decision of the supreme court to convict prominent human rights lawyer prashant bhushan for criminal contempt of court on the basis of two twitter posts in which the lawyer criticized the performance of the indian judiciary so icj is in <coughs> sorry icj is in news you should have a fundamental idea about the icj how it works and what is objectives of icj as so icj stressed that the ruling does have a chilling effect on the exercise of protected freedom of expression in india and urged a review of the laws and standard on criminal contempt as applied by the indian court the icj joins the 1800 indian lawyers in calling for the supreme court to review the standard of criminal contempt emphasizing the law is overboard and should be aligned with the international law as standards on the limit scope for restriction on freedom of expression and criminal contempt now this was the news you can see prashant bhushan's conviction seems at odds with international free speech law international commission of jurors so from upsc perspective you should have an idea what is icj what is international commission of jurors and what is the manner in which that icj as such is constituted and what is the basic objectives of icj the the international commission of jurists on tuesday said civil right lawyer prashant bhushan's conviction for criminal contempt of court by the supreme court seemed to inconsistent with the freedom of expression law guaranteed by the international covenant on civil and political right that india was a party to so from upsc preliminary point of view as like i mentioned international commission of jurists what is the fundamental gk and at the same time what is the fundamentals of icj you should have a clarity in your mind so international commission of jurists when you look into advocates for jurist and human right since 1952 the icj has performed a unique and prominent role as a non government organization defending human right and rule of law worldwide so that is icj and icj's peerless reputation say resides on this pillar 60 eminent judges and lawyers from all part of the world and all legal system with unparalleled knowledge of the law and human rights cooperating with government committed to improving their human right performance effective balance of diplomacy constructive criticism capacity building and if necessary naming and shaming and match direct access to national judiciaries implementing international standard and improved legislation impacting millions guiding training and protecting judges and lawyers worldwide to uphold and implement the standard working for access to justice for victims survivors and human rights defenders in particular from marginalized community following a strict sorry following a strict procedural based management in performance of its projects so this is the icj's uh, basic details and uh, have understanding regarding icj since 1952 the icj has performed a unique and prominent role as a non government organization defending human rights and the rule of law worldwide now this discussion is related to qatar labor laws qatar is in discussion because in 2022 the world cup is going to happen in qatar so qatar labor laws reforms qatar has brought about a change in its labor laws scrapping rules requiring migrant workers to make their employers permission before changing laws and setting monthly minimum wage at about dollar 274 an increase of over 25 percentage the reform which was announced by the emir of qatar in october 2009 was signed into law now what are qatar news labor laws the first reform has abolished the unjustified kafala system or required for a no objection certificate that migrant worker need to get from their employers before changing law so before changing jobs so upsc can ask 
kafala system is in news is related to what or what is kafala system is about or out of the statement what is right or what all your statement are right related to kafala system so the first reform has abolished the unjustified kafala system or requirement for a no objection certificate that migrant workers need to get from their employers from change, before changing job now workers will have to serve a one month notice period if they have worked for less than 2 years and notice period of 2 months if they have worked longer the second reform involves increasing the minimum wage by 25% to dollar 274 or 1000 katri riyals and an additional 300 katri riyal for food and 500 katri riyal for accommodation in case not provided by the company these reforms are now applicable to workers of all not so workers of all nationalities and in all sectors including domestic workers who were previously excluded so this is the basic fundamentals of qatar new labor laws and uh, the new changes in qatar labor laws the reforms which were announced by the emir qatar in october 2019 were signed into law the indian express 2020 so in indian express you can see the same discussion the major heading as it is the new changes in qatar labor laws the reforms which were announced by the emir of qatar in october 2019 was signed into law but qatar labor laws is in discussion because in march 2021 you can see no right despite reforms on qatar labor laws the hindu march 2021 so let's just two months back you can see labor law reform being celebrated in qatar fall short of upholding the basic right of migrant workers they, in the newspaper you can see they criticized non implementing of the qatar laws and the discussion was no rights despite reforms no rights despite reforms on qatar labor laws the hindu march 2021 discussion labor law reforms being celebrated in qatar falls short of upholding the basic right of migrant workers that's the discussion now qatar labor laws why were they changed qatar is hosting the 2022 fifa world cup and in the run up to the sporting event that is viewed by more than half of the global population the country has faced flag for its labor laws seen by many as being exploitative of migrant laborers the international labor organization has hailed the move and notes that qatar is the first country in the region to dismantle the kafala sponsorship system that is common in the gulf region and requires work to have a sponsor in the country they are working whom then becomes responsible for their visa and legal status for unskilled workers this mean depending on their employers for such sponsorship so why they are changed and what is the basic fundamentals behind changing that laws as such is explained right now so qatar is hosting the 2022 fifa world cup and in the run up to the sporting event that is viewed by more than half of the global population the country has faced flag for its labor laws seen by many as being exploitative of migrant laborers that's the background behind changing the labor laws right now now in newspaper you can see the new changes in qatar labor laws no right despite reforms on qatar labor laws so qatar labor laws right from the perspective of 2022 fifa world cup you should have clarity the next topic is un security council 1267 committee the united nations security council led by france united kingdom and united states has rejected all pakistan attempt to list india as designated terror under its 1267 committee for counter terrorism sanctions so the end of discussion you have you might have noticed in newspaper related to united nations security council 1267 committee the united nations security council led by france uk and us has rejected all pakistan's attempt to list indians as designated terrorists under this 1267 committee for counter terrorism sanctions so you as an individual should have absolute clarity what is un security council 1267 committee is about and you can see in hindu newspaper on september 2020 united nations security council rejects pakistan attempt to name indians on terror list the hindu newspaper as it is giving the explanation in this manner the un security council led by france uk and us has rejected all pakistan attempt to list indians as designated terrorists under this 1267 committee for counter terrorism sanctions under the united nation charter the functions and the powers of the security council we know to maintain international peace and security in accordance with the principle and purpose of the united nation to investigate any dispute or situation which might lead to international friction to recommend methods of adjusting such a dispute or the terms of settlement to formulate plans for the establishment of a system to regulate armaments to determine the existence of a threat 
to the peace or act of aggression and to recommend what action should be taken to call on members to apply economic sanction and other measures not involving the use of force to prevent or stop aggression to take military action against an aggressor to recommend the admission of new member to exercise the trustee function of the united nation in strategic areas to recommend to the general assembly the appointment of the secretary general and together with the assembly to elect the judges of the international court of justice so here i read the united nation charter the function powers of the security council why because united nation security council is in discussion so upsc can frame statement related question related to united nation security council and the provisions related to now the next topic of discussion is related to international energy security conference 2020 international energy security conference 2020 was recently organized by global counter terrorism council that is gctc global counter terrorism council now what is global counter terrorism council global counter terrorism council is a registered non profit international think tank initiated by public spirited individuals to awaken further issues of national interest and global conscious about terrorism as a threat to humanity human security etc so what is gctc is about global counter terrorism council is a is a registered non profit international think tank initiated by public spirited individuals to awaken further issues of national interest and global conscious about terrorism as a threat to humanity human security etc members belonging to different faculties and background like senior bureaucrats academicians officers from armed forces and paramilitary services distinguished diplomat leading researchers media analysts parliamentarians professionals corporate heads human rights groups they provide support and regulatory contribute with the aim to deliberate on the root cause of global terrorism and to present effective solution to the problem faced by society and the government so what is dctc is about global counter terrorism council is a registered non profit international think tank initiated by public spirited individuals to awaken further issues of national interest global conscious about terrorism as a threat to humanity and human security now right from the PIB on 29th September 2021. We can you can see a press release in connection with the same. Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan says the Atman Nirbhar Bharat will drive our effort in evolving a comprehensive energy security architecture in the country. Task of all of the government approach in implementing Atman Nirbhar Bharat initiative in energy sector. Minister delineate five prong strategy to reduce crude oil import dependency. Country saved Rs 5,000 crore by taking the advantage of low crude oil prices in April and May 2020 to fill the existing strategic petroleum reserves. Union Minister Petroleum and Natural Gas and the Steel Sri Dharmendra Pradhan today said that the clarion call given by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi for an, for an Atma Nirbhar Bharat will try our effort in evolving a comprehensive energy security architecture in the country. in his keynote address to gctc energy security Con conference 2020 organized by global counter terrorism council he said that it will be marked by continuity of robust energy policies put in place over the last 6 years and a change to address the covid-19 unleashed challenges so i have read the press release because it is directly related related with the international energy security conference so in the international energy security conference all this detail is conveyed by the minister now ministry of petroleum and natural gas sri dharmendra pradhan says that atmanirbhar bharat will drive our effort in evolving a comprehensive energy security architecture in the country talks of all of the government approach in implementing atmanirbhar bharat initiative in energy sector minister delineates five pronged strategy to reduce crude oil import dependency country saved rs 5000 crore by taking the advantage of low crude oil prices in april and may 2020 to fill the existing strategy petroleum reserve so this were the four major headings in that press release and under that it is conveyed that uh, union minister petroleum and natural gas and steel sri dharmendra pradhan today said that the clarion call given by honorable prime minister sri narendra modi for an atmanirbhar bharat will drive our effort in evolving a comprehensive energy security architecture in the country in his keynote address to gctc energy security conference 2020 organized by global counter terrorism council 
He said that it will be marked by continuity of robust energy policies put in place over the last six years and a change to address the COVID-19 unleashed challenges. Now, these all are the discussions related to international issues. So in the next series, we'll be going with the next topics. So have a perfect look of look on international discussions and watch the videos carefully at the same time the coming series will be discussing the next 10 topics and once again international issues international organization is very very crucial as far as upsc preliminary examination is concerned so keep an eye on international organization and institution work out the current affairs question papers that is very very crucial and very very decisive and at the same time have a peaceful productive study calm version is the most productive version meet you in the next video have a great time thank you